Hello, I am Lise Colucci, and I'm one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com, where we help you to discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. Today, I want to talk about something that happens to most people who have been with a narcissist, and that is we often feel silenced. Have you ever noticed or talked to other survivors or felt in yourself the way that after abuse or when during abuse or when you are newly discarded or have left a narcissist, you feel you have no voice and you have no ability to speak up for yourself to say things that are on your mind. You don't even know what's on your mind. How do they do that? What do they do to make us feel so silenced? So let's talk about that. Know that a narcissist creates a world that is the way they need the world to be, right? They don't live in a relationship with someone else where it's reciprocal. So if you think about it from that standpoint, there is no voice. There's only the narcissist voice, right? So how do they create a world that silences you down so much that you don't actually, even coming out of it afterwards, feel like you have your own voice or your ability to speak what's on your mind or even know what's on your mind? One thing they do is through the gaslighting, it takes away your voice. When you're being, when someone is gaslighting you, and they are confusing facts and twisting words and making you feel completely crazy within a conversation, you've lost the point of the conversation. Therefore, anything you have felt, anything you needed to say, any discussion you were trying to have is nullified, and there is no ability to be heard. So gaslighting is a highly effective tool to shut someone up. It shuts, the, it shuts down the topic. Basically, it is effective to shut you down and to stop you from speaking. When you do that enough to someone, the person goes into any discussion where they, you know how you may not know what gaslighting is, yet you may totally know what it is, but you may not even know, but you know what it means to have a, a debate or a conversation or an argument with a narcissist, with, with your toxic partner. You know what it feels like, and you know that if you say anything, there's going to be a reaction. And so it silences you before you even start. You see, if, with enough gaslighting, the pattern of discussion, the pattern of argument, the pattern of debate, whatever you want to call it, is a toxic pattern that that silences you from the get-go. That um, Bell is saying, yes, absolutely, I'm literally interrupted after a syllable gets out. I have no voice. I too have been ordered. It's exceedingly invalidating. No dignity, no respect. I, I was told you're being rude and disrespectful. Don't speak that way. For things like trying to explain my stance, trying to politely explain something, trying to, I mean, trying to get my point across or bring the topic. Here's the worst one. Bringing the topic back to the point of the conversation that's when the silencing starts, right? That's when the, the shutdown and being told, literally, you're rude and disrespectful. I won't listen to this. They shut you down. So they shut you down hard because they can't be accountable to anything that's real. Another thing that they do is the word salad, which goes with the gaslighting. So if enough words come out of their mouth that make no sense in, in relation to the topic, it throws the topic, it derails the topic. So a more covert narcissist may never call you a name, may never yell at you, may never deliberately even interrupt you, but boy, can they word salad? And can they say things that don't make any sense or have any relevance to the topic? Or the way they might word salad is to get on a tangential point and go go with it. as it, So they'll, they'll pull a thread from the conversation that's sort of somewhat related, take it on that direction and, and go until the whole conversation is about what they are making it be about versus what it needs to be about. All of this is to avoid the simplest things. Sometimes it's ridiculous. One thing that they can do, this is an interesting one to me that I thought of yesterday talking to somebody about being listened to and how great it is to have someone listen to you and really, really hear you. And then I thought, wait a minute, the narcissists, they listen to us often. They listen to us. Why? Because they're grooming and they're, and they're gathering information. That's not to say everyone that listens is toxic. What, what they do and what you watch for is them using what they've gained from you, the information against you. So it takes time, of course, but you, they listen to get information and that shuts you down because then the next time you want to share something with them, and this happens especially in family narcissism when, when you're, the narcissist is a parent, 
or, or a family member that you turn to to share information with. You know, you might want to go to mom and tell her this, but mom's a narcissist. So when you do, when you tell her the good things and they listen, they may sit quiet and they may listen, but then that comes back to bite you later. And you realize that you need to not talk. So it silences you in the situation and it shuts you down. Not saying anything to them is actually louder and more self. Um, it keeps you from being silenced by not telling a narcissist your intimate details. Does that make sense? And, and if you're living with one in particular, don't give them your good. Don't give them the good stuff. Don't give them your any information that they don't need to have to function on a daily basis, good or bad because it can come back to bite you. And, and it's and then it silences you because you feel like you should never have said anything. It causes shame and shaming is a big way they silence us. Ever had a hand held over your mouth? I have. Because the words I was saying weren't words that the person wanted to hear coming out my mouth. And they weren't mean words. I'm telling you, they I don't. It, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's not like there was a stream of, of abuse coming out of my mouth. It was just words that weren't wanted to be heard because their words were wanting, they wanted to speak what they wanted to say. And so the, out comes the hand over the mouth. Ever have that happen? If not, they often do it with words by telling you to shut up, calling you names, criticizing you. Sometimes silent treatment is how they silence you. They'll just shut, they'll just clam up. They'll stonewall you with a couple of grunting, mean, aggressive statements, and then silence. So silence silences you. Because what can you say? All you can do when someone's doing the silent, well, what we tend to do is fun. And we've totally dropped the topic and stopped talking about what we need to say. So we're silenced. Smear campaign, that's one way they silence you, isn't it? What can you say to a smear campaign? We know what to say. If you know me, you know the truth. It's all you can say. You can't go around defending yourself with a smear campaign because it makes you look like the one who's got something to hide, right? It's a very difficult situation and they absolutely silence you in your life with a smear campaign. And so the evading and avoiding the topic altogether, they'll do that in conversation. So you start talking about something and they will completely evade it. It's again, another form of gaslighting. Another, another gaslighting way they might is twisting your words, right? specifically twist misrepresenting your intentions along the lines of evading as they might busy themselves while you're talking. They might insist you listen to them. And as soon as you reply, sure, I'll listen to you. I'm listening. As soon as you reply and you start talking, they're looking around and they're oh, ha, 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 and then talking to the dog and they're playing with their phone and they're not paying any attention to you. So of course that silences you. It shuts you down right? They might, they might speak in generalizations with you, right? You might be having a conversation and say, you always, you always talk about that. You always bring that up. This is always, you do this. You're always that you're so, you're so sensitive. You're way too sensitive. These generalizations and, and blanket statements are a way that they silence you and they do not let you have a conversation. The whole, one of the mid, like, most frustrating parts for a lot of us is that if we know that if we could just have a rational conversation about the topic, it would be resolved in five minutes. But the narcissist has to run these things through, usually for hours and sometimes days, right? Just because they don't want to talk about a topic that could be resolved in five minutes, almost always, right? It's, it's big topics too that can't be, but Often it's these tiny things that are just, and you have no voice, right? There's no voice within the relationship. It starts to wear on you and you begin to have no voice outside the relationship. Making jokes and sarcastic and then telling you you're too sensitive if you react to it. Jokes at your expense. Um, you might be, oh, this one I would get a lot. You might be doing something kind of seriously, trying to have a conversation, trying to, I don't know, it could be anything, little it doesn't have to be a big deal. Something you're doing, you're in, and then you want to tell them something. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Cause you're, you think you're in a normal relationship and you say, oh, this happened such and such. And they make a joke about it. And it completely shuts down what you're trying to say, turns it all into some ridiculous joke that they think is funny, which isn't funny, just so they don't have to talk about the thing you're trying to talk about. It's not relating. It's really, really toxic and rude. It's like humor at someone else's expense ill-timed, um, makes you feel like you have no one, right? You have no one to listen to you.
threatening to leave, especially if you have, um, and I've talked about this before, whatever your vulnerability is, that's what they'll go to. And if you have an abandonment issue at all, which most of us don't want to be abandoned even without an issue, right? But but some people are like, whatever, get out if you don't like it. But most of us, you know, especially if we're trauma bounded, we that a th the threat to leave bags in hand is extreme and it's scary. And it, and it feels, it feels like even if they left, even if you want them to leave, it feels like you're never going to get closure. So you want to keep them there to get the closure. It's horrible. All these ways they keep us quiet, right? And here's a big one. Because when you're in a narcissistic relationship, we spend so much time trying to smooth the waters. We often, most often, most of us start to defend the narcissist. Okay, maybe not in a, in, a, in a place like this, right, where we're able to speak freely, but, but to our friends, to our families, to ourselves, we hide the things that they're doing from our own um, awareness. Does that make sense? So that we can cope with it. And so it silences our doing what we know we need to do, which is get away. It stops us. And it keeps us from acting on our own agency, which is a form of silencing. So learning to see them for who they are is a way to help with that. Learning to accept who they are and stop making excuses for their behavior. I don't care if they had a hard childhood. I really don't. We, Many of us have. I mean, I care about people, of course, but that is no reason to go abusing someone else. Whatever their reasons are, whatever we our empathy is telling us that, and they play to this, okay, they'll play to it. If they're a vulnerable covert narcissist, they will play to your empathy and therefore silence you from doing or saying what you need to say. I did not tell mine that I knew he was on a dating app for years until the discard because of the silencing. Because I knew if I said anything, Number one, there'd be no closure. There'd be no, it wouldn't do anything. It would, I would be gaslit so hard that I would feel like it was my fault for looking when it wasn't actually looking, someone told me. <laughs> so I knew the truth, but I knew if I said it, the truth would be twisted. And it was so powerfully emotionally devastating that I knew I'd fall victim to it. It was, it, and, and so it wasn't that I hid per se from it. It just didn't speak about it. And the silencing was huge, right? It's, it's, it's pervasive, the silencing. Oh, they'll bait and they'll bait and then feign ignorance and innocence, bait you into something and then pretend they didn't. And it throws you off your game and then, and then it shuts you down. So they push the boundaries. They push the boundaries. We know this. The put by pushing boundaries and sometimes can create a situation where you're saying things. So by making you reactive, by making you reactive to them, by making you yell and scream at them, whatever it is you do that you would not normally do in a, in a situation, by making you cross your own line of how you behave toward other people, they have silenced the, the true you. And they have created a situation where you're just reflecting what they do to you back at them. And the real point of anything you want to say is lost. So you are silenced. Okay. <laughs> How do you get your voice back? So after a discard, after you leave, there's one thing. And while you're in it, or if you have narcissistic parents that you are still in contact with or whatever your situation is where you still have toxic people around, how do you have a voice? Number one, it, let's go there first. Don't give them information. You have more of a voice by giving information to people who outside of that relationship than you do within the relationship. So keep your good stuff for the good people in your life. Find good friends. Find people you can trust. Use a therapist. Use a coach. Whatever it is. Give them your good information. Give people who can reflect back to you positivity your good information. Don't give it to the narcissist. It's a way they shut you down and you don't you don't want that part shut down. That's the part you want to keep for yourself. All right. It's not a it's not a relationship that will ever be, ever be healthy. It's, we have to face it. It can never be healthy with them. So we have to find healthy relationships.
outside of it in order to, number one, build enough contrast so we can see that there is life away from the narcissist. And number two, give us some something of support. So having support in your life is useful. It helps you have a voice. Bella is saying she's been making videos talking to herself about her feelings. Sometimes I cannot write because my hands shake so much. That is really good. Keeping your actual voice for yourself to log what's happening in your life. That's really good. Journaling, if you can write, is one way. Um, learning the things that, so a narcissist, one way they silence us is by taking away our ability to even know what it is we like. They take away our knowing the things that we enjoy and we like in life. As you regain those, you regain some of your voice. So go out, even if you're still with a narcissist, even if they're still in your life, find some time away from them and find simple joys in your life to remember who you are. Remember who you are. Then the silencing can feel a little less like it was described earlier where it makes your heart race because you're not stuck in that, in that situation. You're not stuck then because you have yourself. Any other ways to feel less silence? Talk to a friend, talk to a therapist, talk to a coach, talk to, um, talk in a support group, get in span and share your story. Listen to other people's stories. Listen to people, right? That helps. Sometimes it's not the abuse we want to be heard about. Sometimes it's just our day, right? We don't want to necessarily only want to be heard about the horrible things in our lives. Sometimes we want to be heard for who we are. So get in group coaching, get in group therapy, something like that where you have other people to bounce other things around. Um, get into some, some social groups that are fun, that are you know, things of interest for yourself. Book clubs, things that aren't... Um, personal can be good. Things that are, you can voice. Oh, book clubs are a great idea. Book clubs or a crafting club, something that you create, if you knit, if you sew, if whatever you do, something, a club for that, because it's, um, you get to express your opinion about a thing, the book, the thing you're creating, whatever, you get to talk about it with other people, but it's not so personal that it's it gets involved in your personal life it's your opinions it's your thoughts which but everybody wants to hear them in a book club right they want to hear that's why they're there they want other people's input on the book otherwise they could just read the book by themselves so that's a perfect way to feel heard or you don't even have to talk you can just listen to other people listen to them express themselves that can help you remember how to express yourself in a healthy way the more you learn to set boundaries with people it's like having a voice, right? It gives you voice. If you have not subscribed, hit subscribe. If you'd like, get notifications. I think there's a notification button as well, but you can also, if you would like text notifications, message me at 33222, put the word lease live, L-I-S-E-L-I-V-E, -E -E, and I will send only the text stating when I'm coming on about 10 minutes before I'm coming on and no other text to you. So that is it. If you enjoy this topic, or these videos, please hit the thumbs up. And that's it. Just take care.